Hello and welcome. The fighting is continuing along the front line in Ukraine. Both Ukraine and Russia make minor advances. But we have two big news. A, another strike or maybe even a series of strike against the Kerch Bridge happened just a few hours ago. And the other one is that despite my expectations, there actually seems to be a bridgehead over the Dnipro and it seems to be expanding. Um, we look into this at least to the extent that we know so far in this situation report. There has been a new series of airstrike, among them Kinshal were used. Uh, Ukraine claims they shot down one close to Kiev, but the several of the strikes were meant to strike the Sukhoi 24Ms that are being used to launch storm shadows. Supposedly some strikes were meant for warehouses where the cruise missiles are stored in. We do not have any confirmation that those strikes had any success if they were successful to whatever degree. It shows though how serious the Russians take the threat through scalp storm shadow through cruise missiles like this. We start with the Eastern Front. We have reports about continuous Russian attacks in the area northeast of Kupiansk. They keep pushing in the direction of Synkivka. Uh, I see Russian claims that they captured some, as they usually call it, strongholds of the Ukrainians. That should be small trench systems, small outposts, but whatever it is, like um, they basically, when, whenever I find the translation, they call it a stronghold. They supposedly captured a couple of positions i'm not i have not seen conclusive data but it seems likely that they advanced somewhat especially in regards to the fact that the ukrainians started an evacuation of civilians in this area to make sure they stay safe from artillery and from airstrikes so this is a clear sign of the fighting activity and of the likelihood of Russian advances in this area. The Ukrainians supposedly did some counterattacks there. I do not have any confirmation that they led to anything. Russians generally claim some advances, but as I said, I do not see much proof. I even found a small mill blogger that claimed they have reached the outskirts of Sinkivka, which should be roughly here, but uh, I'm, there is no proof for that either. The Ukrainians are, as said, uh, evacuating civilians there, but the fighting is also continuing further south. We have Russian attacks in Novosilivske being reported, as well as in Nadia here. They are also attacking in the direction of Torske as well, which is here, as well as in the Serebryansk forest. The Ukrainians uh, attacked themselves at Novosilivske, at they attacked at Novoi Horivka, Ye Horivka, I'm not sure how to pronounce it. Novoye Horivka, probably. So they supposedly attacked here, as well as in the Serebryansk forest. I do not see any change in territory here whatsoever again. Further south, south of the Sivesky Donetsk fighting is continuing. We have reports of Ukrainian attacks at Yahitne, but the quote was sabotage and reconnaissance groups. So that seems really to be tiny groups, maybe five to 10 men that were attacking there. But we, what we can see though, is that the Russians have advanced in this area. Um, this is a video where I have the clip and you can see it shooting here on the Ukraine, on the Russian positions, and the strikes are, are hitting here. And this is geolocalized exactly here, next to the Berhivka reservoir, showing the Ukraine, the Russians to be back in this forest line. This doesn't necessarily mean they've recaptured it, that they took position there, that they are lodged in there now, but it means they have at least, at the very least, reached it in one of their counterattacks and thus pushed the Ukrainians back, who have who have been in the past in the in Berhivka, in the outskirts or at the, the um, outermost part of Berhivka before. So they definitely have been pushed back somewhat here. We have also reported reports about Russian attacks at Glishchivka and at Andrivka. Some claims that the Russians gained some territory in Glishchivka. I cannot confirm anything here. So overall, we have more or less a, a not moving front line. I do not see any proof of, of serious changes here whatsoever. But we do know that the Ukrainians have definitely been pushed back, at least temporarily, here at the Berhivka reservoir. Further south at Avdivka, we have... Um, 
several Ukrainian attacks being reported in the area here. We have the, the attacks being reported on um, Nevelske. We have Ukrainian attacks. Um, Nevelske, Vesele was also one of the points. So here the Ukrainians are attacking around Avdivka, Vesele, Nevelske and in the direction of Staro Mikhailivka. Ukrainian attacks, no confirmed changes in territory. The Russians are attacking around Avdivka as well. Krasnohorivka attacks are going on in this direction into Marinka and in the direction of Novomikhailivka. Here the same, no confirmed change in territory. Ukrainian attack is reported in the direction of Mikilske. They have not gained any territory here from what I see and we do know the fighting is continuing here at the border of the oblasts between Donetsk and Saporizhia south of Vilika Novosilka. The Ukrainians are now in the northern part of Urushaine. Um, supposedly the Russians are likely in the southern part with some so-called gray area basically a contested area with no permanent pr presence of either side in the middle but the Ukrainians have definitely pushed somewhat south in the last few days. There have been reports about Russian counterattacks on Staromajorske and on Uroshine, but they seem to have completely failed. I do not see any confirmation that the Russians were able to recapture some of the territory recently lost to the Ukrainians. At Robotine, the fighting is also continuing. We have um, here now visual proof of Ukrainian soldiers at the outskirts of Robotine. We see it. This is where it's geolocalized. We've had that the Ukrainians were in the past reaching these houses here. So if we go in, this was more or less taken here. The Ukrainians are now slowly pushing into Robotine, but again, like it's going very slowly, but at least they are getting forward. West of it, I have no fresh reports about the fighting of Piatichatki. There is continued fighting now and then there, but no big movements. The um, in more interesting part is the bridgehead over the Dnipro. In the last video, I said I showed you claims that the Ukrainians were holding this area and had advanced to this town here. Um, it's completely unclear what the point is. Now, some claims are that the Ukrainians are ha are, have remained there the whole time. Others say, if I look at the Russian military bloggers, they say that the Ukrainians have returned there. But whether they stayed there all the time or not, we do have now Riba. At least if it works. We do have Riba now and I need to turn off my camera for a moment. And you can see them here showing not even a contested area close to Kosachi Laheri but a fully liberated area by the Ukrainians that is contested along its outskirts. This is somewhat important as now they are on the proper left side of the Dnipro River. From here on, there is no big, no waterway uh, contesting any further advance to the southeast. And it seems they are currently lodged in there. It's also interesting that the Russians are saying they blew up the bridge here north of Oleshki. It must have been them, because why would the Ukrainians blow it up? At least it seems unlikely, which doesn't, which then doesn't make too much sense. While the why the area here is still contested, if there there is no more bridge for the Russians to reinforce, the Ukrainians should have advanced further south. And in the past, at least, it seemed more or less clear that this area here is also in Ukrainian hands by now we can if we go over here like more or less this area these bridge here this bridge here supposedly is blown up so the Ukrainians should have better chance to advance further put pressure on Oleshki but here they have the issue that there's still a waterway between them so they can't simply advance with tanks here on the other hand they are at least according to Riba having a bridgehead more or less in this area here it's uh, of a uh, fair, fair size. We are talking about several kilometers in width and probably up to three kilo kilometers in depth. The interesting part is too that um, Riba is saying that the western part of Kusachi Laheri is still in Russian control, even though we have claims from other sites that they've lost it. We have one here. I don't know why it always 
insists on reloading. But we have here, a, a Romanov is saying that the western part of the settlement is under the enemy. So the Ukrainians have liberated the western part of the town. This is the video here of a Russian soldier confirming this. And uh, we have the interesting part that there is the claim from a Russian military blogger that there was a raid on a Russian convoy south of Kachovka. Now, if it's geolocalized properly, this raid supposedly was, I think here, um, 30 Ukrainian soldiers are supposedly here doing raids on their, on, in the rear area. Now, either that's complete nonsense, or we have a, a um, defense line from the Russian along the river that is so full of holes and so weak that the Ukrainians can by now already infiltrate with bigger groups that they can more or less come and go as they please. Even, even according to the Russians, supposedly they withdrew from here and came back and sent reinforcements. Even according to the Russians, they now hold several square kilometers on the western part, on the left part of the Dnipro, on the eastern side here which is a sign of how weak the Russian hold is there and that it might actually open some opportunities in the future. We have generally also the report that parts of the 7th Guard Air, um, Air Mobile Div Division, the VDV Division, as well as Vostok Ahmad are in Robotine, uh, in and around Ob Robotine. Both are fresh units that have not been fighting there recently, so the Russians already have to reinforce their positions close to Robotine. They also have to send in um, reinforcements, fresh troops. And the interesting part is the 7th Guard VDV Division so far was considered to be along the Dnipro, and it was supposedly removed there after blowing up the dam. So and, and at best has been replaced with mobilized personnel. This means that the Russian defense, defensive line along the river seems to be fairly weak. Uh, it seems like the Russians have thinned out their positions there and that the Ukrainians are now smelling a chance to advance. This is far too early to expect that this is now the big breakthrough, that the big breakthrough is coming. It might very well be known in a day or two that the Ukrainians have withdrawn. It will surely depend on the Russians too, how much artillery can they muster in a small area of a few kilometers by two or three kilometers. You are fairly easy target for enemy artillery if he brings enough artillery and enough shells. This will depend a lot on it, but it might be the opening they need to open a second front that can assist both the advances at Orichiv and threat um, going down here and threatening the connections to the Crimean bridge. Because here we come to the next point. There's a lot of information when it comes to the developments along the Crimean peninsula. First, let's start here that the Russians built a pontoon bridge close to at the Chonha bridge, Chonha Strait. I showed you in past videos that the Ukrainians have attacked the bridges here. There are actually two bridges, a wider one and a small one in this in this area here. And they have struck both supposedly. And we see now the um, that there is a pontoon bridge put up, but it's continuing. We have pictures here from air defense close to the Kerch bridge being active, by the way, showing the positions of air defense systems. Supposedly, there's a Russian already arrested for this, and his uh, confession is being spread around in the telegram circles. But we have here information now from Riba. Riba is talking about an attack. They say it was an S-200. I read about two as well. S-200 is a more or less obsolete air defense system with a fairly big range. And the Ukrainians have retrofitted missiles that were still in their possession in a ground-to-ground -ground role, which extends their range. As obviously those, those missiles do not have to stay in ground control uh, connection. They do not have to maneuver to, to make up for defensive maneuvers by the plane. They don't need a minimal uh, velocity to be able to still intercept a plane that has its own movement, but they can be fired at a perfect ballistic arc, extending their range and thus can be used for ground attacks. Probably not with the, with the highest accuracy, but at least according to them, the S-200 was used against the bridge. And they also said that according to them, units of the 31st Air Defense Division, yeah, they, they um, fought them. But it said somewhere here, I think, that, um, what was it? 
they somewhere said that right now here at the same time there is still a carrier of storm shadow scalp cruise missiles in the sky in southern ukraine so when they posted it they said there was still an su-24m of ukraine in in the air likely doing a second strike on the crimean bridge that at least what they were saying and right now the informations aren't clear we have a video here of the crimean bridge and you see the smoke screen being deployed at several positions but the interesting part is we have parts with black smoke as well and that should indicate hits we see at least two we see that should be two here we see something that looks dark here we see dark smoke directly at the most important part of the bridge uh, where the ships go through so the damage would be the most and here seems to be some dark smoke as well and and it's continuing here you could probably guess that it looks like the bridge is hanging through a little bit even though i wouldn't uh, go so f as far as this and um, this video is being spread around of supposedly russians on supposedly right now and as you can see it's um the smoke is being deployed and now this is happening and, and what that is supposed to mean is unclear whether that was filmed inside of a strike inside of a hit on the bridge that could theoretically also mean that the car was just hit from behind like they did almost did themselves when in the smoke screen the car in front of them stopped so it might just have been a car crash i cannot i'm not able to date the video the video might be older the video might even be from a different place for all i know but that's being circled around i do not see any proof and the the important part is i'm not sure there's any proof of any serious damage now we see black smoke here and usually black smoke should be from explosives, not from smoke screens. That seems to be right at one of the pillars, but could be anything. The problem is here that we still really don't know what happened. Uh, here again, uh, Vuenko, for instance, is mentioning that they are um, that that people taking pictures are endangering Russians. Just to to complete the picture. Because in the past, Ukrainians, I reported here that Ukrainians arrested uh, bloggers, uh, TikTokers, YouTubers, etc., who would make videos. For instance, the video of the Patriot battery engaging Kinshal, which allowed the Russians to geolocalize the rough position of the battery, for instance. All those things, they have been punished in Ukraine. Ukraine is threatening, I think, up to 12 years in prison for uh, posting videos like this. And obviously, a certain amount a certain type of people is using that to attack ukraine's integrity and to claim that this is a proof of ukraine being a dictatorship the russians do the very same thing um, obviously in times where everyone has a cell phone with photographic with photo and camera it's a huge danger that a civilian bystander wants to take a selfie wants to take some cool pictures for his facebook twitter or vk account which then um, reveals military positions that are threatened, that are in danger, and both sides punish that, both sides look for the perpetrators, and both sides try to suppress it with more or less success, and this is more or less what we should expect from nations in war. So in neither case, it's too, it should be judged too dramatic. Both sides do it, and I think both sides are more or less understandable in doing this. What we have here is another video. Um, it's showing supposedly the attempt to intercept one of the missiles, maybe the S-200. And we see here that could be whatever, that, whatever this is, but we see something that looks like explosions here, but several of them. So I have no idea whether that's supposed to be the intercept of a missile. I cannot properly identified I, I have no explanation why it, why it would be three of them when we only see one smoke plume of the missile climbing up but at least this is one of the things being spread around and here we see that the smoke screen was fully deployed because some claims are that whatever these pictures show some issues no it just showed that the smoke screen was deployed too late later in the later uh, the in the day the smoke screen was fully deployed and covering the whole bridge if we look at the roadmap right now we still see that um, supposedly the bridge should be closed by now and no traffic here and interesting too that we see how heavy the traffic here in Perikop is especially in the part that goes north not directly to Kherson um, the amounts of roadways that are usable for 
Russians are increasingly limited after the Ukrainian strikes on the bridges here and the bridges here. Um, I think there's a small dam here that should be able to be used by cars, but the overall mobility out of Crimea is increasingly under danger. So to summarize it, um, as of now, I cannot confirm that the bridge was hit. There are some claims of it. There's uh, said up to eight explosions, but explosion can be anything. It can be a hit. It can, the Russians themselves say that fragments of the missile crashed down on the island, um, on this island here. So obviously items, especially filled with explosives crashing down could cause some explosions. That's not a proof of the bridge being hit. Uh, air defense that, that hits something or that self-detonates at the end of, at the edge of its range is an explosion, etc. As of now, I cannot confirm that the bridge has been hit. I have not seen conclusive proof of this, but it should, it should be a clear sign that Ukraine seems to be increasingly being earnest in, in serious in trying to take take out the bridge and you can only defend in a position like this for so long unless the other side runs out of items and then obviously the question will be where, how, lo how long will Ukraine be able to keep up those attacks either with S-200, with him 2 ballistic missiles or with Storm Shadow and Scalp and maybe at some later point Tauros and Attackums. We will have to see at which point which side is running out first of, of either uh, opportunities to strike or of uh, luck. Overall, we have uh, information about the troop, um, uh, troop generation 2 from the Russian side. Russia has clearly already started production of their own Shahid drones. The expectations were that the factory in Tatarstan would not open up before next year, but Ukrainian analysts have seen uh, parts that have Kyrillic uh, Kyrillic writing on them showing and some modifications even on the latest Shahid being used so they think that Russia has already started up production and it will only increase showing that Ukraine will have to face a lot more Shahid and like in, in, in orders of magnitudes more Shahids in the near future. We have uh, information about the tele, uh, about Wagner too. There's uh, um, different sources talking about uh, the the camp in Belorussia, and according to this, the um, the camp seems to grow, not getting smaller. There was the claim that that Wagner is basically either deploying to Africa or Syria, and the rest is going on vacation because uh, Lukashenko is not willing to pay Wagner's bills. And at least it seems like the main camp here is not in the process of. Um, being given up. The, when it looks at the changes in cars and in containers, etc., it actually looks like the production that work on the camp is continuing then, and that it's increasing. So it's unclear as of now what happens to Wagner in Belorussia. We have an interesting case here from Kommersant from Russia. A Rush, uh, the the uh, a court in, um, in Moscow is now going to talk about the court case for two two Russian officers that are accused of um, of failing to repel a surprise attack on the territory of the Russian Federation, according to Part Two of Article Three Hundred Forty of the Criminal Code of the Russian Federation. The interesting part is that uh, they failed to prevent the shelling of their unit by the armed forces of Ukraine in the Belgorod region. So Russia wants to sentence officers for having been shelled by artillery it, it's not saying that um they um that they they were negligent in anything yet but the fact that they were killed in um, that there were losses and that ukraine struck some military installations close to the border is going to be held against its officers is an interesting case um which we'll have to see whether Russia is trying to shift blame here to some officers or whether they actually had something that is worth punishing. But at least the, the translation here, um, failing to repel a surprise attack is interesting, to say the least. We have news from the international support, and it's not good. Ukraine will likely have to wait another year for its F-16s. Uh, reason for that is even the even those few Ukrainian pilots who are fluent in English will have to take a four-month English course uh, on top 
because of the technical uh, lingo, basically, the, the specific air language that is being used and that supposedly takes a full four months before they can even start proper training. So um, this is another shortcoming done by both sides, both from the Western allies who did not uh, allow for or invite Ukrainians to start training pilots when it was obvious from the beginning that at some point at least planes will be delivered and from Ukrainian side that they didn't make sure that some of them are taking English lessons or a lot more are taking English lessons. In the end, whoever you want to blame, the result remains the same. The Ukrainians will likely have to wait for a full year before they have F-16, at least if we believe both Washington Post as well as Ukrainska Pravda. We have a video here from the Army 2023 exhibitions and there we see that the Russians are now doing building the so-called cope cages, basically have, are in a process of standardizing it. As you can see, it's a BMP chassis that is used for, for medical evacuations. And um, while you can mock it and you can see that it's done a lot, it's clearly a sign that obviously it's working. Um, after this amount of time, there should be some knowledge whether or not something like this works and or whether or not it's just increasing the profile of the IFV, thus making it more easy to identify and more easy to attack or whether it's working. And it seems to have, like we can see it here, that it has mesh in it. And I guess it, it should be successful, at least against FPV drones. Uh, the RPG-7 warhead will likely not penetrate through it by sheer speed of it. So either it's stuck in there afterwards or it it, um, uh, it explodes, but the distance from the hull should be big enough that the thin armor, even from the BMP, should be strong enough to withstand it. So while we can always mock developments like this, to me, it's a clear sign that their system actually works. And we finally have a video and a picture of the damaged Ukraine, dam damaged Russian ships. We see here the SIG and you can see the damage on the hull here. Let me zoom in. Yeah. Here you can see it clearly how big the hole in the hull is. And the same is for the um, LST that the Ukrainians hit. Both ships will take a while until they are repaired. But as we can see, it's already in dry dock or at least in a floating dock. So the work on repairing it has already commenced. That's it already for me for now. If you like the situation report, please hit the thumbs up button. Leave a comment what you think about the attacks on the Crimean bridge or whether you think that the bridgehead over the Dnipro might actually be the one thing that Ukraine needs to win this counteroffensive um, to finally make a breakthrough in this counteroffensive. If you're new here, I would like to invite you to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon. And this channel is only possible because of the support of viewers like you. If you like to support the channel, you can do so by the means in the description. Thank you very much for everyone already supporting this channel. That's it from me for now. Thank you for watching and I'll be back.